book, Blue Gold. If you want to understand why water is called the Blue Gold, you need to read this book, which is called Blue Gold. This book is written by Maud Barlow and Tony Clark, which was published on 2001. Maud Barlow is a Canadian author and water activist. She is a founding member of the Council of Canadians, a citizens advocacy organization with members and chapters across Canada. She is also the co-founder of the Blue Planet Project, which works internationally for the human right to water. She is an author of 19 books and contributing author of 12 books. And Tony Clark is also a Canadian water activist and author. He is on the board of directors of the International Forum on Globalization. He is an author of 11 books. Read this statement on the middle of the book cover. The fight to stop the corporate theft of the world's water. The book has 3.9 out of 5 as average rating on Goodreads website. Imagine Business Week magazine said about this book, an angry and persuasive account. Why? Let us dive in together in this book. Before we go through the book content, we want to confirm that what we are going to say about the book is only a reflection to what is written in the book, regardless whether we agree or not. We use, in most of the cases, the author statements as well. The book comprises of three parts. The first part, called The Crisis, the second part called The Politics, and the third part called The Way Forward. First, the introduction of the book starts with the fact that, suddenly, it is so clear, the world is running out of fresh water. Humans are polluting, diverting, and depleting the natural resources of water at a startling rate. And daily, our demand of fresh water outpaces its availability and thousands of more people are put at risk. The social, economical, and political impacts of water scarcity are becoming destabilizing force and water-related conflicts springing up around the world. Imagine this statement was in 2001. What about now? I leave it for you to think. The authors said in the introduction a very dangerous model and principles of economy is being established in the world, which is so-called Washington Consensus. Key to this consensus is the commodification of the commons. What that means, simply, everything is for sale, even those areas of life such as social services and natural resources that were once considered the common heritage of humanity. So, governments and international institutions are advocating a Washington Consensus solution, the privatization and commodification of water. And water, according to the World Bank and United Nations, is a human need, not a human right. There is a big difference between two terms, according to the authors. This will lead to many questions about natural sources of water. Who owns it? Should anyone own it? If water is privatized, who will buy it for nature? How will it be made available to the poor? Who gave transnational corporations the right to buy whole water system? Who will protect water resources if they are taken over by the private sector? And many other questions. The introduction of this book is very interesting and stimulates your brain to read the book. Let us start with its three parts, and I will only give you some of the ideas presented by the authors to encourage you reading the whole book. The first part, called The Crisis, which combines three main chapters. The chapter one is titled Red Alert. This chapter discusses the dangerous situation of fresh water resources on Earth, and human beings can rely only on 34,000 kilometers of rain that annually form the runoff that goes back to oceans via rivers and groundwater. With these limited freshwater resources, the world population is exploding. The highest freshwater supply is for drinking and sanitation. Then, industry consumes 20 to 25 percent of freshwater supplies and increasing annually, and many of these industries are water intensive. This chapter also discusses how damming is polluting the freshwater and affects humans such as the Nile River in Egypt, the Yellow River in China, and the Colorado River in America. In addition, the world is urbanizing and the continents are losing about 18,000 billion cubic meters of freshwater every year, causing the oceans to rise by 5 millimeters annually. It also discusses the problem of decertification and the overconsumption of aquifers, with multiple examples around the world supported with important statistics. According to authors in 2001, 31 countries are facing water stress and scarcity. 
Over 1 billion people have no access to clean drinking water, and almost 3 billion have no access to sanitation services. The second chapter is titled Endangered Planet. This chapter discusses how dangerous is the pollution of fresh water. For example, according to the authors, in China, 80% of the major rivers are degraded, that they no longer support fish. Another example is India, where they have highest polluted water outside of China. The Ganges River, where millions come to purify themselves, is an open sewer. Many other examples were discussed to reflect the water pollution all over the world. This chapter discusses also the pollution of the Great Lakes by with different contaminants, including mercury, lead, polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, and other contaminants. Other important topics were discussed, including wetland loss, deforestation, global warming, invasive species, non-sustainable farming, and dams. Tens of important statistics, cases, and challenges were presented. Finally, the third chapter is titled Dying of Thirst. This is really very important chapter presents the dramatic effects of contaminated water on humans. The subject of lethal waters lists many diseases associated with contaminated water, which are called waterborne killers, affect humans. Unfortunately, 90% of the third world's wastewater is discharged into rivers and streams without treatment. Waterborne pathogens and pollution kill 25 million people every year. I think it needs a global attention, similar to what we did with COVID-19. The chapter discusses very important subjects, such as unequal access, elite privilege, food scarcity, dam fallout, water conflicts, border struggles, and other interesting topics. Wow, now we know where we are in the current situation of water challenges. Let us go to the second part of this book, the politics. This part has four chapters. Let us present them quickly, one by one. Fourth chapter, entitled Everything for Sale. This chapter discusses critical subjects of economic globalization, transnational corporations, commodifying nature, privatization schemes, financial speculation, international competitiveness, corporate states. It also presents interesting statistics. The fifth chapter of this part is called Global Waterlords. From its title, very interesting. It is really a critical chapter because it discusses how international water companies are commodifying the Earth's water for profit. It discusses cases and names of water companies in the world and how they are changing the world water resources to make more money and money only. I will keep it for you to discover it. For me, this was a choking chapter. The sixth chapter of this part is called Emergent Water Cartel. It is basically discusses how corporations and governments are posed to mobilize global trade in water. It is interesting topic, but after you reach this part of the book, it becomes expected to have such chapter. Then, finally, the last chapter of this part, number seven, is called Global Nexus. It is also a critical chapter it explains how international trade and financial institutions have become the tools of the transnational companies. This is one of the most shocking chapters I have read. It talks about the roles of the World Bank and International Monetary Fund, IMF, and other UN agencies in the global water resources. I just give you small titles to keep your passion to read the book. Now, the final third part of the book is called The Way Forward. It has three chapters in it and I will explain them in a simple way for you. The eighth chapter is called Fight Back. It discusses how people around the world are actively resisting the theft of their water rights. It gives inspiring examples on topics such as public control, fighting privatization, water exports, stopping dams. The ninth chapter is called The Standpoint. It simply explains how common principles and goals can save the world's water. It explains very interesting 10 principles should be applied globally in order to protect our water resources. They are very important, and you can pause the video and read the principles if you need to know them. Finally, the last chapter is called The Way Forward, which basically explains how ordinary people can and will save the global water supply. It discusses topics such as water preservation, water equity, 10 steps to water security, which are very important actions should be taken. I have covered the titles of the book, and these were the chapters. I tried to attract your attention to read the book if you are a water activist or interested to know about what is happening of the water resources globally. 
the book deserves your time to read it. Below, in the description box, I have added to you some links if you want to buy the book, either for a hard or soft copy. See you in other reviews.